time to wake up, folks. The rooster has crowed. <laughs> the alarm clock has sounded. And you don't need to hit the snooze button. Amen. But I don't know about you, but one of the hardest things to do is wake up. Especially when you got something you need to do that's important. It's hard. Sometimes you got to wake up in the morning to go to work, you know. It's, it's hard in the mornings. Unless you're a morning person, then it might be easy on you. You might be a spring chicken as soon as it's time to get up. You're like, hey, let's go, let's go do whatever. For me, man, it's, it takes me a while to wake up. But, you know, there's certain things that we do to go to bed. Some of us may take melatonin, you know, or make sure you don't eat anything sweet about three hours before you got to go to bed. You know, all these precautions. And then we want to make sure we get up so we set an alarm, maybe two or three alarms, because we sometimes might press the snooze. Maybe we have an alarm clock and we set it on our phone. Maybe we tell our husband or wife, hey, wake me up if I don't get up. We got all these different things. And I, I thought it was interesting because God kept giving me so many confirmations to this message. And a couple of those confirmations were some of these old school ways that people used to use back in the day to wake up. So we're going to look at those pictures. Uh -oh. okay. We're going to look at this next slide. So this was uh, the candle technique. What they would do is they would put nails in a candle. And as the candle would burn so often, a nail would ping on the metal. And after the certain amount of pains, I guess the person would finally get up. But I thought that was pretty interesting. What a unique alarm clock back in the day. And then this next one is a little step further. These people were called knocker-uppers. And that's kind of like a long straw that lady uh, had. And she would shoot peas at your window to wake you up. Has anybody ever seen this before? That's pretty interesting, isn't it? All the things you can learn when you're preparing for a sermon, right? And he just put that in front of me. I was like, wow. But people would pay this lady to come by their window and shoot a pee to wake them up in the morning. Isn't that hilarious? And, the, and what she found was that shooting a pee was just loud enough for the person inside, but not loud enough for the people next door. See, because some of those people were shooting rocks or throwing rocks at the window and it was waking other people up too and getting a free service. So she figured out if I shoot a pee, they'll have to pay me to come shoot the pee, you know? Very interesting. Nevertheless, people would go to great lengths to wake people up. Even in Israel, people had a method of sounding the alarm or waking people up with the shofar or a ram's horn if there was enemies about to approach the gates and they needed everybody to get up and get out of bed, they would blow that horn. Wake up! The enemies are at the gate. We're fixing to be attacked. And folks, I want to encourage you this morning. I believe the enemies are at the gate. And we have already been attacked. In our country in our individual lives, the devil never stops attacking. And he has agents that he employs to do his bidding that are around the country doing just that. Folks, in our culture today, there is a word called woke. Have you ever heard that before? It's one of those modern terms. You're woke if you're up to the times, you're hit to the times and hit to these sensitive issues of homosexuality and transgender and all these things, you're woke. But I want you to know, folks, God wants you to be awake, not woke. Amen. He wants you to be awake to Him in His ways, not woke to the evils of this world. Not endorsing those evils. Do you see the devil at work? He always twists what God does and what God says. God calls us to be awake. Well, then he comes up with a term called woke. To mean the complete opposite. The complete opposite of what we're supposed to do as Christians. So I implore you today, and I believe God implores you today. Be awake this morning. Be awake to the times that we are living in, folks. 
And don't be a sleeper cell Christian anymore. This term might be confusing to you, but in certain religions, they have people called uh, that are in a group called sleeper cells. And they will go and infiltrate a society and they will pretend to be just one of the good guys and they will act like your neighbor and everything else and then they'll get the call and they'll say, hey, it's time for an attack and then boom, they'll spring into action and cause mayhem. That's a sleeper cell. Well, God has called us not to be sleeper cell Christians in the way that we're just to act like the world and act like everything else. No, we're called to be a Christian at all times and in all ways. And always, folks, be awake, be vigilant, be sober, be about your Heavenly Father's business. Amen? Yeah. Don't be caught up in the ways of the world. Don't love the world, neither the things in it, but love the Father's will, His words, and His ways. And focus on heavenly kingdom things. We must expect Jesus' return at any minute. Folks, He could come while I'm preaching to you right now. Any minute. So we must always be ready, must always be sober, must always be awake and be aware of the circumstances and the situation that we are in and be about our Father's business. We should always be watchful and hopeful with that expectation that He could be coming any minute. More so than Christmas morning when we were, when we were kids. Y'all remember that? Just couldn't wait to get up and go open presents. Sometimes me and my brother would lie in bed awake and we, we can't even go to sleep. I just can't wait to go open those presents. In the same way, that's how we look towards our Lord's return. I just can't wait for him to get back here. I mean, I can't wait for him to take us home. Come on, Lord. I got to keep with one eye open because I want to catch you. You know, I'm ready. Amen? Amen. And folks, let me just encourage you. There is no time to be slack in our walk any longer. No time to be slack. This is the time, the end times, folks. The end of all things is at hand. And the coming of our Lord is at any minute. And guess what? He wanted you to live for this time. He, did. he made it so that you would be in this time for a reason. He wanted you here for this specific time and for a specific reason and a specific purpose. He wanted you for that. He called you to this. Amen? Will you rise to the occasion or will you fall to adversity? Will you be awake to the times or will you be asleep at the wheel? Be careful, folks, because this is not the time to get slack. This is not the time to go back to sleep. It's not the time to hit the snooze button. We need to be awake. And there's no time to be lazy. There's no time to be a sluggard. If the laborers are few, then those of us who know what needs to be done need to get off our rumpus roast and get to work. Amen. Amen. Stop being lazy. You know there's things that need to get done. You know there's people that need to get saved. Well, get to work, folks. Be used for this time. The devil wants us to be asleep. He wants us not to have urgency built inside of us. He wants us to take it easy and, and worry about your own affairs and not God's affairs. Worry about your own kingdom, not God's kingdom. He wants you to forget the people who need the gospel because He wants to bring as many people to hell as He possibly can. And if He can get you not worried about it, He's done His job. Do the opposite of what the devil wants, folks, and get to work. Be about your Father's business. Amen? Amen. Now this goes for me too. There's times where I get slack in, in, in knowing what needs to be done. Sometimes I get too focused on what I need to do instead of what God needs to do through me. Because that's more important, what He needs to do through me. Amen? What you need to do is irrelevant. What He needs to do is of the utmost importance. Eternal business, folks. But we need to wake up and we need to do what we already know needs to be done. And we need to wake up to the times that we are living in and to the fact that Jesus could be coming 
very soon. And folks, it might be sooner than you think. It might be very, very soon. I know people have been saying this for thousands of years. <laughs> but hey, it's been thousands of years, right? If it was soon back then when he spoke the words, how soon is it today? 2,023 years later, right? It's very, 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 very soon, folks. And I'm telling you, it might just take you by surprise, and I think it will for the most part. But if you're paying attention, you're going to see the signs. You're going to know the times we're living in. And you're going to already be cautious to that and aware of that. And you're already going to be awake. And so if you live with this expectancy at all times, you're not going to be completely knocked off guard. You're not going to be completely caught unaware. Yes, you're not going to know the day or hour. But you may know the week. You may know the month. You may know the year. I don't know. He may give us a clue to that. He may clue us in and say, Hey, son. Hey, daughter. I'm about to be there. Be ready. But see, if we're already doing what we know we need to do, we're already at work. We're already being His servants. We're already being wise. Amen? Now let's get into the Scripture and see the true importance. Matthew 25, 1-13 then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, which is Jesus, folks. We're all the, we're all the virgins in this scenario. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. I don't know about you, but I want to be wise. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. When you hear oil, think Holy Spirit. Amen? They didn't have the Holy Spirit with them. They may have even claimed to be Christian here. I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you, Jesus. But they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's the key. That's the kicker, folks. That's what separates the sheep from the goats. Amen? That separates the fools from the wise. you got to have the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels, and we are the vessels of God with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they slum all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Maybe it was a trumpet. Behold, the bridegroom is coming in his glory and in the clouds. Amen. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Here it goes, folks. This is what we, we don't want to see. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Whew. We don't want to hear those words. He says, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We all need to be prepared, and the first way of preparation is making sure you are one of His sheep, making sure you do have the Holy Spirit. You may have faked some other people out. You may have talked the talk. You may even walk the walk sometimes. But He knows who are really His and who are not. And if He don't know you, you ain't getting in. You better make sure you know Him. You better make sure you got the Holy Spirit. Trust me, this Christian stuff makes a whole lot more sense when you got the Holy Spirit. If you don't, then everything's still kind of uh, up in the air, you know. But if you got the Holy Spirit, He opens things up to your, to, to your mind and your understanding. And your eyes can see and your ears can hear. And man, this Jesus stuff makes more sense. Because He helps illuminate that to you from within. 
But you got to have the Holy Spirit. And I can't sell you some of mine. I can't give you some of my oil because all I got is what it's in me. I can't give it to you. You got to go straight to the source. You got to go to Him. He's the merchant in this scenario. He's the one who will give it out to you. And it is free of charge. Unlike this scenario here, unlike the parable, it's free of charge. You don't have to pay anything. And sometimes we might get confused because we see an offering plate passed around. Well, this money is not so that you can get saved. <laughs> this is to help further advance the kingdom, amen? And this is all towards that. It has nothing to do with your salvation. You ain't got to pay a dime to get saved. But you do have to give your complete life over to Him. And He does have to become your Lord for this to truly take place. And He knows the difference. He knows the difference. All right. Let's move on. Let's make sure we're all watching, though, because that day or hour could come at any minute. Luke 12, 35-48. Let your waist be girded. That's basically, that's a, that's a way of making sure that you're not living shamefully. Amen? Modest in all of your affairs. Living righteously before your God. Make sure you're, you're girded in that sense. And your lamp's burning. Be on fire for the Lord, folks. Be on fire and not lukewarm. And make sure it hasn't gone out all the way. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master. Are you waiting? Are you waiting with hopeful expectation? Lord, I can't wait for you to get back here. And don't ever say, Lord, just give me about ten more years. Give me one more year. Let me take care of this and let me do this. I still haven't seen this. I still haven't done that. Who cares? None of that matters. What matters is your Lord's return. What matters is you being busy about His business. This life is not meant to be a vacation for us, folks. Although sometimes we treat it that way. This life is work. This life is a test. We need to get real to that. We need to be awake to that reality. Stop living in a fantasy, folks. Stop living in a dream. This, work, this life is work. So yes, we might get burnt out at times, but get renewal. <laughs> get, get more oil. Get that fire burning again. Come on, Lord, help us. But be like the men, the men that are waiting for their master's return. And when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. See, he's been preparing for it. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes will find watching because you have that hopeful expectation. You're looking up. Matter of fact, my uncle came up with this song and there, while I was listening to it, I was like, you need to put this line in there because it just goes so good with it. And we can't stop looking up. We can't stop looking up because we're looking for Him. Amen? I don't know about you, but I like looking at the clouds. And sometimes I see shapes in the clouds, and that's like a fun thing for me. I like to see, oh, I can see this. And sometimes I point that out to my kids, and they say, hey, there looks like a dinosaur, an alligator, or a, a rabbit, or whatever. But my, my reason for looking up is because I'm waiting for him to come. <laughs> I'm looking for him. And at night, I like looking at the stars. But it's just another way for me to wait for him to return, folks. Don't stop looking up. He's coming. And don't get discouraged by the naysayers and the scoffers because they always say, hey, he's been promising this for years and he still ain't here. Well, there's going to be an eventual time when he does come, but we've got to be awake to it, folks. We've got to be watching. We've got to be alert. It says, assuredly, I say to you, he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat at the marriage supper of the Lamb, folks. Have them come eat with him and will come and serve them. Come on, Lord. He's always been a servant. And if he should come in the second watch, which is from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m., or come in the third watch, which is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., and find them so, blessed are those servants. Because it don't matter what time of night we're waiting. Amen. 
And yes, this isn't a call not to ever get sleep again. You can go to bed. You can actually sleep. It's okay. Let your sleep be sweet. But have this heart about you and this mentality about you and this way about you that you're always watchful. You're always looking and hoping is Jesus on the way. Amen? Amen. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season. Amen. He's got you covered and he will give you your portion in due season. You got your dues coming, folks, and they're good. They're coming from the God of all things. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. You will be at work serving God when he comes. Amen? You will be at work serving the kingdom and the king of all things, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and you will be busy working for him. Not working for yourself, not doing your own thing, building your own kingdom. And it's okay to take care of your own business, folks. That's not what I'm saying. But your main focus is his business. Amen? Your main focus is serving him. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. The Bible says that we will rule and reign with Christ. Rule and reign. To what degree, I don't know. But he will reveal that to us on the other side of glory. But nevertheless, he has things prepared for you, folks. He's got things he's wanting you to do in eternity. Come on. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be, be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. Folks, now we all know. So if you don't do this, you might get a bunch of whoopings for it. All right? Because I've already let you in on it. So you're not ignorant. You're not unaware. You are awake to this truth and this reality. And you might be mad at me, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Uh, God has work that needs to be done, and He wants you to do it. So we're not going to be those that get whipped. We're not going to be those that get punished for our sluggard mentality or our lazy mentality. We're going to get on, we're going to get beyond that. And we're going to get to work in every way that we can. In all the service that we can do for the Lord. Even if it's just walking around picking up trash at the church. Whatever it is, we're going to serve God to the fullest of our potential. Amen? Amen. And trust me, there's something any of us can do. There's always something. You may not have the best physical condition right now. You may not be able to do a lot of physical things. But now that we've started putting the prayer, the prayer requests in the bulletins, maybe you can become a prayer warrior and start battling in the Spirit and doing that footwork. Amen? Being a servant in that way. But there's always something. So let me encourage you with that. There's always something you can do. Amen? Amen. Mark 13, 32 through 37. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed. Basically means pay attention, folks, to what's being said here. Watch and pray. Being watchful. Seeing the times we're living in. Seeing the craziness of this world. Watch and pray accordingly. Amen? For all things. 
For you do not know when the time of it is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Be awake, folks. Not woke, but awake. Be awake to the times that we're living in. Be awake to God's will. Be awake to His purposes and in servitude to Him. And that when He comes, He won't find you asleep on the job. But He will find you working your little rumpus roast off for Him. Amen? Amen. You will be at work. You will be watchful. You will be awake. You will be paying attention. And you will be doing your job. Amen? Joel 3.9 Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Now I think this is in judgment to Israel and, and, and some of those nations. Nevertheless, I like how it said prepare for war, folks. Because we are in a spiritual war. Wake up, mighty men of God. Wake up. It's time to be awakened. Women, you warriors as well. Wake up to this time and be in battle against the enemy. Don't sit back and just be victims. No, we already know that we got the victory, don't we? We sang two songs about it already. There's victory in the Lord. I say, amen, there's victory in the Lord. And we already have the victory. Walk in it. Fight that way. Fight as if you know you're in battle. And then Joel 3.12 and continuing says, Let the nations be awakened. All of the nations, even in America over here. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Every nation shall be judged by God. And I don't know about you, but I can't control what Washington does. I can't control what anybody else does, but I can control what I do. And I'm going to be lumped in with those who are working for the Lord. I'm going to be lumped in with the sheep. I'm going to be lumped in with one of the five virgins that was wise. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to be serving Him to the best of my ability. And when I notice I haven't been doing it, whoop, time to wake up again. Quit hitting the snooze, Brandon. It's time to get to work. Amen? Amen. Give yourself a pep talk. You might need it. Isaiah 56.10 His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Well, that's one thing as a watchman on the wall, I will not be. I will not be a sluggard in my job. And that's why I will give you these hard warnings sometimes. I will give you the hard truth and the harsh reality. And I will not shrink back from proclaiming the whole counsel of God. But I'll give you the whole of the Word and you will grow from it if you accept it. Amen. Yeah. If you take it in and you accept it, you're going to have a great relationship with the Lord. Amen. And you will be a wise servant and a rightful steward and an heir to the God of all things. You will be used by Him. But you got to Pay attention. You've got to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. Your heart has to be receptive to this. I can't make you receptive, although I can implore it to my heart's content until my voice goes dead, till it gets hoarse and I can't speak no more. But I, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Amen. you got to drink of that living water yourself. And you got to say yes and amen to these things. You have to say, you want me to get to work? Well, then I'm going to get to work. And I'm going to get calluses on my hands. And I'm going to sweat in the hot. And I'm going to be wore out because I'm serving you. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to shrink back. And I'm going to do everything in my ability to serve you because you deserve it. Amen? Proverbs 19.15 Laziness casts one into a deep sleep. 
and an idle person will suffer hunger. When you are lazy, your own laziness will be your downfall. Sometimes just not working and not trying to work is your own downfall. Now there's a difference from those who are actually trying to work and trying to do and trying to serve and things like that. There's a difference. God sees that. But when you're lazy, you'll fall into despair, folks. Proverbs 20, verse 13. Do not love sleep lest you come into poverty. Open your eyes and you will be satisfied with bread. Folks, get out of that bed. Get out of bed and get to work. Do something. Right? Quit being lazy. Now, I understand if you're hurting and you're sore and all these things and, you know, but sometimes you got to work past all that. You know, there's a lot of times when I'm hurting and I'm sore, but I still got to do things. Right? I still got to work. I still got to do things around my house. Even though I'm hurting and I got many problems and I could lean on every single one of them. Oh, my back and my knee and my wrist and everything else. It's all out of whack and I don't need to do anything. No, I got to do stuff. For my family. And I got to do stuff for God. I got to do stuff for the kingdom. And that means I got to get out of bed. And that means I got to do stuff. And even if I'm hurting, that's okay. Eventually I'll get back to the bed. And I'll get back to relaxing. But I got to get the work in. Amen? And let me just tell you this. Some of the best sleep that I've ever had was because I've worked my booty off. And some of you might can attest to that. You've got the best sleep of your life because you work so hard. Oh, yeah. And then, man, you got that bed. Oh, it feels so good. But if you're always in the bed, well, hey, you might not be able to get to sleep because this is just the norm. Get to work and do something for the Lord, folks, if you can, if your body allows it. I understand some of us have physical Disabilities that literally we can't do anything. But if you walked in here on your own two feet, more than likely you can do something, right? More than likely. You know within your own self if you can. I'm not going to be the judge of that. But you do know and God knows. And He will hold you to it. He will. Alright. Now Jesus said something to His trusted three. That's Peter, James, and John. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, we're going to go to Luke 22, 46, and we're getting close to the end. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? See, he kept coming to them over and over. He was in the garden praying for hours, and they kept falling asleep. Maybe because they were too wore out from the day. Maybe they'd been a long day of ministering. Who knows? But they all said, hey, man, this, this ground feels good right now. Let's lean up against this tree and let's snooze a little bit. And he kept coming back. Wake up. Come on. Why are you sleeping? we got to be praying. But he says this. Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. So there was good reason behind him telling them, get up and pray. Don't sleep. This is not the time for sleep. This is the time to be praying. Get up. And if you see this whole picture unfold, what happened? When the guards came, Jesus cuts the guard's ear off. Jesus is like, hey man, what are you doing? Don't you know that I have to go to the cross? Why are you trying to cut this guy's ear off? Those who live by the sword is going to die by the sword. That's not what we're about, Peter. But we all know Peter's a hothead. And then what happens with most of them? They all fled in fear and terror. Why? What you so scared about? Haven't you seen all the miracles Jesus has been doing? Won't you stand strong with Him? Maybe if these guys would have been praying like they should have been praying, they would have stood there with Jesus. Maybe if the top three would have done what they were supposed to be doing, the other ones wouldn't have left. Hey, Peter, James, and John ain't leaving. We're going to stand our ground with Jesus. What a sight that would have been for those guards. Ain't nobody scared. But they all fell into temptation because they fell asleep at the wheel and they didn't pray like they should have. Folks, let me tell you, don't fall asleep at the wheel in prayer for our nation. 
Don't fall asleep at the wheel in prayer for your kids. Don't fall asleep at the wheel in prayer for your counties in, in Texas and, and your family and your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers. Don't fall asleep. Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. Lest they enter into temptation and fall. We have got to see and recognize the duty that it is on all of us that claim that Jesus is our Lord. Yes. He has called us to serve and He's called us to work and He's called us to pray and He knows you're wore out, but keep pressing on and press in and do what you've been called to, folks. Get to work. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6-7 Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. Let's make sure, folks, that we're not falling into the ways of this world. Doing things that we shouldn't be doing, and a lot of times it's at night. Have you ever noticed? My dad told me a long time ago, most of the bad things that happen, happen after midnight. Happen at evening. It happened at the night time. Most of the evil of this world takes place at night under the cover of darkness. I wonder why. Because it's darkness that you're doing. And darkness doesn't like the light. It hides from it, even in the daytime. So folks, if there's anything you're doing that's dark at night, quit. Instead of doing that, maybe it's a time for you to pray. Amen? Come on, Lord, help us. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober again. Be vigilant. Because, this is the reason why, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for you. He's waiting for you to get out of line. He wants you to fall into sin. Because he's got you. He's going to sink his teeth in you. See, all he is to us Christians who are being watchful and sober is just a roaring lion. And really, when we start to think about it, he becomes this little pussycat. He ain't got, he, he ain't hurt me. He thinks he's a lion, but he ain't. And when you're really a warrior and a servant of the King of Kings and you're really doing all that you're supposed to be doing and you know you are, you start to walk with a little bit of confidence and a little bit of boldness and you've been battle hardened and what he is ain't scary to you no more because God has the infinite power and that is who you serve and you are on his side and you are a warrior in his army and man, you're a force to be reckoned with. Amen. Whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Three more scriptures and we'll close. 1 Corinthians 15, 34 Awake to righteousness and do not sin. There it is, folks. Let's just call it out right away. Awake to righteousness and don't sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. What is he saying? He's saying, wake up, stop sinning, and tell somebody. You better tell somebody. Amen? Tell somebody else to do the same. He's speaking this to our shame when we don't do it. See, it's not good enough for you to have the light and hide it under a basket. Yeah, you're saved, but there's other people counting on you to give them the truth. Whether they want it or not, they need it. And you got to be the ones to bring it. you got to be the ones to give it to them. And you can't fall asleep at the wheel on this duty on this job because it is the most important. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 4 excuse me Ephesians 5 14 Therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Wake up folks. The shofar has sounded. The alarm clock has gone off. Whether you're using those old school candles with the nails, whether you've hot hired one of those pea shooters to hit your window, whether you got, you know, a little parrot to wake you up in the morning or a rooster in your backyard, whatever you got, wake up, folks, because we are in some crazy times, and it's time to get to work.
And our final scripture, Romans 13, 11. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Folks, it's on the way. Our Savior is on the way. Jesus. He's coming soon and to a town near you. Believe it or not, He's coming to get those who are on His side. Anybody ready? ready. Anybody looking up? I can't ready. stop looking up. I'm ready for it, Lord. Especially with how crazy things keep getting. I hate to even think that my kids will be alive in 10, 20 more years. Hopefully Jesus is here by at least by 10 years. Come on, Lord, come on. I'm hoping any minute, but hey, hey, don't let it go 20, 30 years. Come on, Lord, come on. But we keep praying, we keep asking for that. Jesus, come. And if we get to work and we do the work of the ministry and we help be a part of the saving of the souls, who knows? Maybe we can be a part of causing this to take place a little sooner than needed. Who knows? If we do the work that He's called us to and we've done the things that He needs us to, maybe He'll come back sooner than later. Because more people have heard the gospel. More people are on His side. All the ones that needed to. Because He can only do what needs to be done. Everybody has free will and everybody has a choice to make. And He can only get those who can be saved. But if all of us are working and doing everything we need to do and everybody's serving the way it maybe it speeds it up a little bit who knows who knows nevertheless the work needs to get done one way or the other so that should be incentive enough amen but don't stop looking up and if you don't know what you need to do ask him god i want to serve you but i don't know just ask Him. I believe He will reveal a more specific thing that He wants you to do. I believe He will illuminate that to you. Because trust me, He wants you to do it more than you do. <laughs> Amen? And then once He tells you, don't feel like, well, maybe I'm not good enough to do this, or I don't know enough. Just do it. He will, he will give you everything you need in the time. Amen? Just get to work. Just do something. And I trust He's going to be with you every step of the way. Amen? Man, through the flood or the fire, He's with you and He's not going to let go. Man, what a blessing. He's the Savior through everything, right? Through all your trials and all your tribulations and any of the persecutions that may arise, He is with you. And here recently, I just went and prayed with somebody and I'm not going to say who it was but they're on their deathbed and they're dying and at one time I saw them as just somebody who was just con constantly attacking me and constantly coming against me and being so negative about all things and e even to the point of saying that I was just trying to get people to bow down and worship me instead of Jesus. Something that I'll never forget. Something that hurt me to my core. Because that is 100% the complete opposite of who I am. And I saw that person as them seeing me as their enemy. I've never thought of them as my enemy. But they, they thought of me as their enemy. And I prayed with them on their deathbed. God orchestrated it. I didn't call. I didn't ask. Their family did. God made that happen. God made a way of reconciliation. Even if they weren't able to utter a word, their spirit was there. And I trust that God made that happen. I didn't make it happen in any way. God did. And God can be, bring resolution to you and reconciliation to you in things and areas and with people you never thought could happen. God can do it. Yep. And He can make a way even when there is no way. Yep. And that is amazing. Our God is so good. 
And he is mighty and he can take care of everything you're going through. Every storm is not scary to him. I don't know about you, but hurricane season's on the rise. And sometimes when the big ones come, I'm starting to get a little nervous. He doesn't get nervous. A cat five, that doesn't scare God. A cat 20, that doesn't scare God. Nothing scares him. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too crazy. Nothing's too hard for him. He's got it. Put your trust in him. Amen? But be awake, folks. Let me encourage you with that one last time. Be awake to the times that we're living in. Be awake to the will and the words and the ways that you are supposed to be living in. And the work that you're supposed to do for God. Be awake to it. Be awake and be sober because the devil's trying to kill you. He's trying to steal and destroy everything from you in your life. Be awake. Be a warrior. And don't give up. You're, 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 you're weary. I understand. We all can get burnt out. Take some time of rest. Amen? Take a sabbatical for yourself sometimes. You know, take a, a, day, of wet, a day of rest, a weekend of rest, a week of rest. Whatever it takes to get you back on fire. Amen? Do what you got to do. And then get back to work. Amen? Amen. But don't take off this whole life. Don't, don't take off and say, hey, I need this whole life to be vacation, all right? No, get to work, amen. Be about your father's business, amen. <laughs>